Personal accounting in the booklet of our checkbook. Why the tally of cash is insufficient. With this lesson, we enter into the technicalities of accounting, and in order to understand them, we start with our personal accounting. In our personal checkbook booklet, we do something which is akin to single entry accounting. We record checks we write and keep track of our ongoing balance at the bank. Let's see how it can lead to difficulties. Here is the way the booklet looks. It's a display of a column for the number of the check, the date of the check, the description of the check, the amount of the check, and the current balance. For those of you who are already familiar with the look of an account, this is not an account. So when we uh, open a new booklet, first of all, we report the previous balance. Suppose the previous balance was 250 euros. So we write that. And then we begin to record checks and the ongoing balance. So suppose check number 101, written on October the 10th, was for school club fees. School club fees. The amount is 50 euros and therefore the new balance is 200 euros. Check 102. Oh, this is simple. Octo on October the 12th, suppose we pay electricity to the electric utility company, 23 euros. Well, new going balance, 177 euros. Now let's come to a non-standard recording. Suppose that on October the 14th, we receive a check from grandma uh, for money for Christmas. So that's money from grandma. She gives us 60 euros. Well, we write 60 here, but of course it's not something to be subtracted, but to be added this time. So plus 60, and the new balance is 200 and 37. This is not exactly what our checkbook booklet is designed for, but there is no problem. Next. Well, as I said, this doesn't disturb the recording of checks and balances. And for instance, we keep on with checks. Check 103 on October the 15th. It's a scarf for Mary. It cost 25 euros, therefore we have a new balance of 212 euros. So far, no problem. Now comes another non-standard writing or entry. On October the 16th, we do work for our friend Joe, but Joe will pay us only at the end of the month. So October the 16th, work for Joe. Suppose it amounts to 80 euros. Can we write plus 80 just like the money that came from grandma? Well, if we did that, we would write plus 80 here and we would record a new balance of 292. But that would not be correct because our balance on October the 16th after the work for Joe would not become 212. And by the way, uh, 92, I mean. And by the way, we can even stress more that with a check for the rent. Let's see that next. But first of all, what we can do here is simply enough. Note that Joe will pay on October the 31st and not before. So as I said, let's Let's stress this problem. On October the 20th, we write check number 104, and that is rent to the landlord. 
suppose it's 250 euros. Do we have the, the money at the bank to pay for that? Well, no. Our real balance at the bank is 212 and not 212 plus 80. So, in fact, if we were to, uh, if the landlord was to cash this check, it would be a rubber check. It would bounce. Uh, the, the bank would refuse it. So we, what we do is we ask the landlord to hold on this check until the end of the month. So it's another note. We ask the landlord to hold on it until October 31st. Because on October 31st, our balance will become 292 and therefore we shall have the money to pay this 250. So we see that when we want to record value coming in, a promise from Joe, or value going out, a check written but not yet cashed by the landlord, that is value which is not cash in this case and in that case, we run into difficulties and we have to make margin notes. Italian merchants in the 12th and 13th century in northern Italy, they had exactly the same problem. And this was particularly true since, you remember, this is the time of the invention of the bill of exchange. Uh, instead of paying with uh, uh, real money, at the time that meant uh, gold or silver, uh, merchants began to pay each other with bills of exchanges, which are promises, that is a variety of our use, and they are much more convenient and also safe than gold and silver when you travel throughout Europe with means of payments. So what did they do, these Italian merchants? Well, they invented, as I said, double entry accounting, but to start with, what they did is very simple. They recorded value coming in, in the form of our use from clients, on another page than the cash tally in their book of accounts. And they did the same thing for their own promises. And that is the beginning of double entry accounting. And in next lecture, we shall go further into the technicalities of this uh, double entry accounting.